What up, Doe Connors? We are finally at that moment where we will learn what is going to be coming up for the eight-year anniversary. Coming up tonight, the special eight-year anniversary live stream event will be taking place for the JP version of the game. But folks, we will be watching and reacting to all of the news here on the channel. So make sure you guys are subscribed. Notification bells are turned to all so that you guys do not miss a single bit of the action. If you're not able to make the live stream, I will do a full breakdown video immediately following the live stream event going over everything that was announced because it is all going to be in Japanese and some of you I mean most of us don't understand Japanese so it might be a little bit tough to comprehend so I will make a full video going over all the details and you guys can watch it the next day but this is going to be a special one because this is not only going to be a live stream where they go over everything but this is also going to be a fan meetup this I think is the first time that they've done this they have done like official events before I believe but in terms of a fan meetup I think this is the first time they've done this for the 8th anniversary, the top 50 players from the most recent JP World Tournament will be entering this, or actually not entering, they will be eligible to attend this event. I don't think all 50 will possibly, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe all 50 actually do show up. Maybe they have to have 50. We'll have to wait and see. But they will be in attendance. There will probably be some cool events, some some unique rewards for them. But then after that, the more important thing is the whole Dokkan world will get to learn what is coming up during the eight-year anniversary. Now, if you guys want access to the stream yourselves, the link will be provided in the description or in the pinned comments, so check both. And uh, this is the link right here. So if you guys want to know exactly what time it starts, just simply click the link and it will tell you because on the bottom left of the screen, it shows you exactly what time it starts for you in your time zone and how many hours from now. So for me, living in California in the Pacific, it's going to be starting at the break of... No, I was going to say at the crack of... Is, is that a phrase? Crack of midnight? No, at the stroke of midnight. That's right. On the 21st of January, 12 a.m. PST. So that is going to be happening eight hours after reset, but right at midnight. So this is very inconvenient for me. But still, I mean, it's a JP live stream. So of course, the timing is going to be weird for a global player. So when this drops, what can we expect to see? Well, I expect the works. I'm expecting a full slew of news for the upcoming JP eight-year anniversary. Because don't forget, folks, we are just about seven days away from the start of the actual anniversary for JP. Last year for the eight-year anniversary, the official part one started on the 29th of January. So given that this is now going to be the 21st, when this actually starts, well, seven days later, that gives you the 28th. So seems like it's making the perfect sense to line up with the start of the eight-year anniversary. One week prior, they will give us the works, all of the news that is needed to pretty much hype ourselves up for what's coming up in terms of the marketing campaign in terms of the countdown and all that things were a little bit different this year because again we had to squeeze in the superhero stuff you know whether it was success or a failure is a, a different story but still the the amount of time that was sort of given to the eight-year anniversary in terms of preparation just wasn't the same so I'm really hoping that this will make up for it by giving us a whole spectacle giving us all of the news and everything that we need to hold on to and hype ourselves up collectively all the way until year eight next week. Now, what can we expect to see in this live stream? Well, let's first start by talking about the data download that was given last night for JP. Shout out to Proton for all things data download. Follow him on Twitter at Proton10MG. Okay, thank you. So looking here, we got new key, new support item, new ticket and countdown images. So the countdown images are the ones that I want to start off with first. So looking through all of these, these are the load screens that you get on the days when you have the countdown. So Global will obviously be getting this in a six month period, but all we see here are basically Goku. So if there was any doubt before about uh, the the anniversary not being Goku centric uh, with the lack of Vegeta, well, this should pretty much tell you because last year during the countdowns, you got to see Goku and Vegeta. Here it is just Goku. So as a Vegeta fan, I'm not so happy. But, you know, in terms of the anniversary, it makes a lot of sense. So each day is basically just in a different moment in time for Goku. Uh, not everyone is necessarily correlated with a spirit bomb. Case in point, World Tournament right here uh you've got the uh the uzaru kid goku thing you've got namek saga in here spirit i mean you know what no spirit bomb was involved right he did use a spirit bomb against frieza that didn't go so well and then frieza killed krillin um we've got it well, there was a spirit bomb that took place during the saiyan saga there wasn't a spirit bomb during the uh the intermittent like android mini android garlic jr saga but still goku right uh, the final countdown, I do like this image, though, because these Shenron are, are, they are important. And if you don't know why, it's basically the Purunga gave the Majin Buu Saga, the end of Z Goku, the final push that he needed to launch that Spirit Bomb and KO Kid Buu. And then the regular Shenron was there 
when the GT Goku was able to defeat Omega Shenron. And then as Goku basically drifts off into the sunset, he dissolves and like becomes one with Omega or not Omega, but Shenron itself. So both of these uh, Shenrons being here does make a lot of sense. And this, I mean, even more so confirms the theory that is going to be GT Spirit Bomb and Majin Buu Saga Spirit Bomb. But you know what? We will find out for sure during the live stream. So if you guys still have any doubts on that, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I mean, for me, it really doesn't matter. If there's no Vegeta, I don't really have a horse in this race. I'll be, I'll, I'll see whatever they have to offer and, you know, I'll still react. But the fact that there's no Vegeta, I, I'm, I'm a little sad about that. Anyway, let's move on to the other info here. So we have the eight year anniversary gotcha ticket as we typically get. This is the free to play one. So this actually, this is the free to play one. I'm pretty sure this is the free to play one. Um, you collect these tickets and then you get to do a free to play summon, not the 77 unit summon, but a different one, I believe. Even if it's not still, you know, it, it's the same stuff that we get on a yearly basis for the anniversary. But the more important thing that I want to talk about were these two items right here. So number one, we've got this tattered up Goku's outfit. The ancestors uniform increases morale of all allies by 12 for three turns. Now, I don't know why the choice of wording here is morale. Maybe it's just a direct translation from whatever's in the data. Most of us are led to believe that this is key. So just to be safe, I'm going to say that we don't know for sure, but I, it's pretty obvious it's key because what else gets increased by 12, right? You're not going to increase attack by 12. You're not going to increase defense by 12. You're going to increase key by 12. So this is what makes the most sense, which is pretty awesome because for three turns, all allies key plus 12 simply overwrites some of the major design flaws in certain characters that people are just unable to use as a result of. If there's a certain unit that doesn't link very well with other units, this completely dissolves that issue. For example, for me, one of my favorite characters in the game, Tech Vegito Blue, simply does not link well with many characters that I often run him with, where he has to acquire all six key to launch a super attack. And sometimes that's just not possible. So if I were to give this item to Vegito Blue, Tech Vegito Blue, for three turns, oh, I'm swimming. <laughs> I'm, I am relaxing because I will have more than enough. In fact, I will literally need zero key to launch a super attack. So this is very, very busted. I'm wondering how frequently you'll be able to obtain this item, uh, where it's going to be. We'll obviously find out more when the live stream event starts and when they talk about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this has got to be key. So this is really, really, really something. And I, I'm very much excited for that. Now, the other one that has a lot of people buzzing is this key, exclusive key for it is a turquoise blue key. And this is for the door of reminiscence. It is a limited key that will allow you to access Dokkan Ultimate Speed Battle. Now, if I were to be a betting man, I think they're actually trying to revamp the Speed Battle event and actually make it relevant. The last time that they renewed this or changed it up was back in 2017, which was well before my time. But this was, this is, and always has been the most useless event in Dokkan Battle history. You literally gain no stones from it. It is simply a way to test out your speed. So you could jump in, take on various bosses. You have to clear them as quickly as possible. And that's it. You don't get to do anything else. There's no reward for it. There's really no incentive other than just familiarizing yourself with Dokkan, I guess. So, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, veteran Dokkan players, those of you who have been around since the dawn of Dokkan, okay? I, I heard, I don't remember if I heard this or I made this up. So you all have to tell me. I think there was something early on in Dokkan's life cycle where they did some sort of an official tournament style thing for speed battle with Dokkan players. I don't know if this happened at a venue or something like that, but I think that there was something similar to that that happened. Now, in terms of an in-person fan meetup, I don't think that ever happened before, but in terms of the actual like speed battle tournament, I think there was something. So let me know in the comments for those of you who have been around since year one, year two, if they did do something like that, that I just don't know about. I think one, I think one of my other content creator buddies told me about this. I, I don't know. But uh, I, I do really hope that they actually make this worthwhile. They add missions. They actually give you some incentive to actually run this event. Because in terms of like speed, speed is not a thing. And if speed is a thing, they also need to make sure that they can fix some of the exploits that can take place when it comes to speed. Because one of the things that I did when I started playing Dokkan was I would run through certain EZAs and I would then change the internal clock on my device to alter the time to make sure that I would beat certain EZAs within certain time limits. Because as you all know, some of the time limit missions that happen during EZAs might be a little bit much for the day one or day two player. So for me, I definitely took advantage of that because I saw it on a YouTube video and I did it. Now that's obviously not, you shouldn't do that, you know, that's cheating. So I'm wondering if with this update, they're gonna also be implementing certain fail safes to ensure that people cannot do that. So stay tuned, we'll have to wait and see what they do with this. 
Also, there's another way. I think it's not only the, yeah, the internal clock being changed. That's one way to do it. I think the other way that could potentially be tackled, and this might ultimately affect chain battle players, might be that they might finally actually tackle the suspending the game sequence when you're on like iPhone. If you're trying to do chain battle, when you're trying to pick up your three attackers during a fate uh, during your actual like chain battle run you can just suspend the game by by scrolling up basically and then your game is no longer in act it's not an action and you can take all the time you need to select your three characters they might potentially tackle that on ios maybe in the hopes that the speed battle becomes an actual true test of speed because if either of those two mechanics are in place people can still then take as long as they need to plan their attack and then make adjustments in between during those like little pause sections, which wouldn't be fair. So I'm curious to see what they do with this. I'm hoping that they actually tackle all of that as well. It does stink that this would affect chain battle if they do, but I'd rather they do this and then they tell people about it. And then we don't have to have another situation where they're like, oh, we're going to threaten to ban you because we're incompetent and we didn't tackle this issue ourselves. So, you know, I don't want that to be a case ever again. So I'm really hoping that they just, you know, come right out with it and delete any possible exploits that could be taking advantage of speed battle other than that that is pretty much it in this data download uh, but that's all that we need because here's my final thing that i want to talk about what can we expect to see from the live stream event i think we're going to get unit info details for the two new lrs or maybe four new lrs i think we're also going to be getting a dokkan festival carnival hybrid format i think this is going to be the first official celebration that jp has exclusively or first that will have Carnival and Dokkan Fest for part one, Carnival and Dokkan Fest for part two. I think we will be getting those Spirit Bomb characters. Whether they're going to be end of Z and end of GT exclusively remains to be seen. There could be other Spirit Bomb characters in there. Maybe we get a Saiyan Saga Spirit Bomb. Maybe we get a Tournament of Power Spirit Bomb. Maybe we get EZAs for units that also have Spirit Bombs. Or maybe we get a secondary EZAs for older units that have already been given EZAs that simply are not that good. So I think we could also be getting some EZA announcements. I think we will get a campaign details section where we go over what's going to be coming up. Login screen assets, uh, special missions, things like that. Exclusive events, skill over events. I think we're going to get the whole shebang when it comes to the eight year anniversary. And I think we will get to see all of the animations and all of that tonight. So this will be a very, very informative live stream event. So once again, if you guys are not able to attend the live stream uh, on my channel, don't worry, I will make a full breakdown video covering everything that is coming up in a following video. Again, it is all going to be in Japanese. So even if you do watch, you may not understand most of it, but at least you'll be able to watch the animations. That's the thing. I think that's the thing that most people are looking forward to. The animations. How good are these animations going to be? And is it going to be something where we have to throw our money at the screen? I'm going to hope that it is a yes. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts on the upcoming e easy? Eh? What are your thoughts on the upcoming eight-year anniversary live stream event? What do you expect them to reveal? Do you expect everything? Place your final predictions. What type do you expect to see? Do you expect to see a carnival hybrid thing? Do you expect to see dual Dokkan festival in part one and legendaries in part two? What are your thoughts? Share it all in the comments down below because we can always come back here and use our predictions as a way to see if we were right or wrong. Also, be sure to subscribe for more Doe content of the future and click the notification bell so that you'll let YouTube know when to see more of my stuff. Do it. Thanks again. Stay tuned and I'll to Dokkan responsibly. I will see you tonight. Goodbye.